breakdown. 15 U.S. Code Part E, Consumer Leases Under Truth and Lending. So your reference video is going to be 15 U.S. Code Part E dash Consumer Leases Renting Property. And it'll go in further depth because, like I said, with these videos, I'm trying to make them short and sweet, my breakdown videos, okay? U.S. Code Title 15. Let's go to 15 U.S. Code Chapter 41, Consumer Credit Protection. 15 U.S. Code Chapter 41, Consumer Credit Protection. Let's go to 15 U.S. Code Subchapter 1, Consumer Credit Cost Disclosure. Now, in Chapter 41, Consumer Credit Protection, if you don't know by now, this is under Truth and Lending. So we are either going to be dealing with Truth and Lending under this chapter or the FDCPA. So it's going to be an either or. Now, before I really get into that chapter, I just want to go over what a contract is. And this is important because we are going to be rescinding some contracts, okay? So let's talk about what a contract is. Contract. A contract is an agreement between parties creating mutual obligations that are enforceable by law. The basic elements required for the agreement to be a legally enforceable contract are mutual assent expressed by a valid offer and acceptance, adequate consideration, capacity, and legality. In some states, elements of consideration can be satisfied by a valid substitute. Possible remedies for breach of contract include general damages, consequential damages, reliance damages, and specific performance. 15 U.S. Code 1635, right of rescission as to certain transaction. And once again, this is under the truth in lending. So you're going to go and you're going to Google and you are going to read this. Once you rescind a contract, they by law are supposed to return your money. OK, so don't take my word for it. Like I said, I just guidepost you guys to the laws that I've read. So go in so you can read to get the full scope of it. OK. Source 15 U.S.C. 1667 2. Lisey. The term leasee means a natural person who leases or is offered a consumer lease. So we know that we are the natural person. So we are the leasee. Source 15 USC 1667 3. So leaser. Three, the term leaser means a person who is regularly engaged in leasing, offering to lease or arranging to lease under a consumer lease. So we know that we are the leasee. We have defined who we are and we have defined who they are and they are the leaser. Truth in Lending Act, TILA. The Truth in Lending Act, TILA, is a consumer protect, protection law enacted in 1968 in response to exceedingly predatory loan practices. Prior to the TILA, lenders would use a variety of terminology and forms of lending that manipulated uninformed borrowers. The TILA changed this by requiring a uniform system of disclosure and terminologies to be used for lending like credit cards or mortgages. Creditors were required to disclose details like the annual percentage rate and repayment details in a clear way to borrowers or else the borrower may be able to rescind the debt. Now, as we know, these people, they don't give us full disclosure because if they did give us full disclosure, they say, hey, did you know that if you're not happy with our services or this contract at any given point, you can rescind this contract? OK, they never give us full disclosure, period. And as you read it under Truth and Lending, they are supposed to. Consumer Lease Act. Consumer Leasing Act. 
The Consumer Leasing Act, CLA, was enacted in 1976 as part of the Truth in Lending Act, TILA, to protect leases from unclear or deceiving statements and advertisements by leasers. The CLA applies only to leases for personal purposes that are longer than four months and cost less than or equal to 50000 not for commercial or business purposes. Congress limited the CLA in this way because its goal was to protect the average leasee with less resources and experience from abuse, but the concept does not extend to expensive or commercial leases because the leasee has more resources to ensure fair lease terms and and bear the cost of misunderstandings. Okay, 14 CFR Part 374 Implications of the Consumer Credit Protection Act with respect to air carriers and foreign air carriers. You guys are going to Google this, okay? Now, I have found um, this information by way of TOPN. This backs up a code in this video. Do your own due diligence. Like I say, in the uh, TOPN, they have took down a lot of this information. So if you cannot find it, that means you're going to have to go to your CFR and you are going to have to go to your U.S. code to go compare some of the verbiage. Like I say, the verbiage will be a little bit different, but you will know when you're in the correct section, okay? 12 CFR Part 1013, Consumer Leasing Regulation M. Once again, Google it because I'm not breaking all of this down, okay? 12 CFR 213.1, Authority, Scope, Purpose, and Enforcement. You're going to go in and you guys are going to what? Uh, 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 Google it. Read it for yourself. OK, I'm just a guidepost. I'm not here to do all y'all work, especially for the free. OK, I'm doing enough for the free. Due process, a.k.a. administrative process. So number one, letter to validate pursuant to 15 U.S.C. 1692 G. Copy and paste it. Do not make it difficult. OK, we're using their words against them. So what I like to do is I find what they say using their words. I copy and paste. I may add a little extra verbiage to it, you know, but for the most part, copy and paste that in. OK, they have five requirements. So when you initially do a transaction, it's a transaction because for one, it's on your consumer report, whether it's a hard, a soft inquiry or just being reported. That is proof of a transaction. OK, and so they have five requirements within the time that you open the transaction that they never follow either. Also, 15 U.S. 44 documentary evidence. OK, now you're going to be dealing with customer service at this point okay so with the letter to validate what i like to do is i like to go to the consumer reporting agencies i'm gonna send them a letter to validate and one thing that i learned from experience you guys if i was you it doesn't matter how many that you guys want to do put them in separate envelopes so nobody knows what is occurring or they're gonna gang up on you like they're doing me okay because everybody know Oh, she's sitting here trying to do this and do that against all of us. So we're all going to make her life a, a living hell and we're going to gang up on her. OK, so you're going to make sure that you send the validation letter to the consumer reporting agency. They are a third party intermediary. So what they're going to do is they're going to send the letters to everybody that is on your consumer report or who you want to be validated, okay? So now you can kill two birds with one stone because you're validating, you're asking the consumer reporting agencies to make sure that they receive the validation and which that's proof that these companies are operating correctly. And so now the companies that you're gonna go after as well they are all on notice that they have to validate this debt, okay? 
And that's why we're going to be dealing with between the consumer reporting agency in which that's like the customer service you would be dealing with initially. OK, number two, letter to cure slash affidavit of truth and conditional of acceptance. This is going to go to the CEO of the company and it is going to go to the registered agent of the company. OK, number three default letter. Your default letter is going to go to the CEO of the company and the registered agent of the company. Now, how do you find out that information, the CEO and the registered agent? On my previous videos, I told you you can go to Rocket Reach um, or you can go to the Secretary of State. There's many ways to find out that information, okay? Number four, arbitration. Arbitration is private. OK, now when you're dealing with arbitration, because typically since a lot of these companies, they're trying to protect their own behinds. Right. So they have an arbitration clause. And the reason arbitration is private, it's not on a court record. So they would prefer to settle out arbitration. You know, now when you are doing arbitration, the things that you're going to need is your arbitration demand letter. You're going to need your terms and conditions and an invoice. OK, and that's what you are going to send to the company. And then you would send that information. You would upload it to the arbitration website. Now you have to you need your terms and conditions because not only is it going to show um, it's going to show you your arbitration clause because that's what they want to see. And that's what you need to know, the arbitration clause. So that is very important. OK. Next, if you are not able to if you don't want to arbitrate, typically you can go to small claims court. So it's going to either be arbitration first or small claims court, which small claims court is typically limited to usually like five to 10 K, depending on your state. How do you get that information? What forms you need to fill out? self-help center that is going to show you how to fill out your forms and which that's typically a cover sheet complaint summons fee waiver and um um excuse me you guys i'm having a brain fart you know because i'm from cali out here they send the marshals in cali we send the sheriffs but once you do the fee waiver if they approve it then they will have the marshals serve these people but those are typically the forms that you need for small claims court once again go to your self-help center and punch up that information and it'll give it to you now after you try to arbitrate and you try to um you try small claims court now you have the option because we are trying to exhaust all of our remedies so your next option would be litigation and that is going to be in district court or federal court how do you get that information? You know, on what forms that need to be filled out, go to your self-help center. I just did a video about district and federal court, what forms you would need and how to maneuver and get that information. Go through, find it. I'm not going back over it again. OK, OK. Unless you are doing a private process, this is how you will get your remedy. All roads lead to court. Consumers are acting as debtors on the public side. You are public or private. Never mix the two. Know what hat you're wearing and when. I'm just a guidepost. This is not for educational purposes. This is knowledge and resources. We go to the source, government websites and law. It's not my words. I just take you to the information. Sharing is caring. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you need more information, Refer to my other videos, refer to all of the videos because they all tie in. I'm just a guidepost. Once again, I cannot tell you guys how to fill out the documents. Why? Because they've already tried to set me up on fake charges, you guys. OK, you guys that know my struggle, you know, it's been a struggle, but I want to get this information out and break it down as best possible. If I could really go into more depth and tell you guys how to fill out these forms, believe me, I would. But this is the best that I got for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, much love to my tribe, my haters 
and much respect to all that follow thee. Bye.